Greetings! So this is my movie review for the 1998 film Rushmore, directed by Wes Anderson, whom I have become quite the fan of recently. The second watch of this movie was way cooler, probably because this time I was a lot less naive of like cinema techniques. Um, Wes Anderson is really detailed about, about his sets, so I thought it'd be cool to just go over a couple scenes that I feel like were really cool. So, one of the ones that I feel like was super impactful was when we take a step into Mr. Bloom's world at his son's B-Day party. And every detail here seems perfect. So we have uh, the colors, camera angles, sound, and costumes that all kind of take a good like chunk of what makes this so meaty. Uh, right off the bat, I noticed how the pool was like this really dark blue green sad color that was very out of place in this movie since almost everything else is a blue or red maybe yellow color so when it's a different color it kind of stands out and you experience it more and then there's this clash between non-diegetic and diegetic sounds so the song comes on and it's playing really really loud and that's like outside the movie but then uh, you start and you start focusing on the words and then you kind of realize that the sounds in the movie aren't really there. So this is kind of important. Like, for example, Mr. Bloom is throwing these golf balls into the pool. And you'd think that you'd be able to hear the splash or something. But there's just, there's not really any sound that comes with it. And it gives you this feeling that he doesn't really have an impact on the world around him. Or can't really affect anything that's happening in his life. He just he throws the ball and there's no sound, no reaction. And then... You have this like shot from behind him where you can see his bald spot, and it just kind of remind like it just makes you think that he's old or worn down or super stressed. And then it zooms off past his shoulder, and you see his wife feeding another man cake or something, and it's just really sad. And then he gets up and he has these Budweiser swim trunks, and he's gonna go jump in the pool that nobody else is swimming in, so it's just like lonely on top of it. And he only takes the cigarette out of his mouth just to take a drink. And so it's just like you have this overwhelming, distressed, drunk dude dealing with all crisis. You know, like, it's just, it's so sad. <laughs> uh, but it's really cool how all these little things really make you feel how he's feeling. Like, that, just that one shot where he tips the drink back and his wedding ring just like catches the light. It's just really cool stuff. So the other shot that I wanted to talk about is between Max and Miss Cross. It occurs right after this one that I just talked about. And they're going down this line of fish tanks and she like drops something into the water and like a light or like she scoops out a Lego with this net and then a moment later she tells him about having a husband and he drops like some fish food into the tank and it makes this really loud bloop sound announcing his surprise that the love of his life could have a husband or something. And then he tries to take out the fish food with the same net that she used, but it, it's not long enough. The net's not long enough and it kind of gives this like, he just comes up too short kind of thing. And then he ends up leaving it and follows her like he didn't even care about fish in the first place. He only liked them because she loves them. And then there's the shot where the... Um, what's it called, classroom window frame goes right down the middle and just kind of like separates what they're talking about where she's dealing with the loss of her husband and he's dealing with the loss of his mom and they're just on different levels. So those are some of my thoughts. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a really good day.